In this example, we have two different force vectors acting on point A, and we have this uh, P vector right here, which is acting at an angle of alpha from this vertical. And then we also have this 1600 Newton uh, force vector acting at 15 degrees from the horizontal. And these two force vectors are acting at point A, and the question asks us to determine the magnitude and the direction of this P vector, which is this vector right here, if the resultant of the two force vectors shown is 2,500 newtons in the vertical direction. So what does that mean? It means that if you added vector P plus this 1,600 newton force vector, you would get a resultant vector that is acting straight down and the magnitude of that resultant vector would be 2,500 newtons. So normally in previous examples, we've been trying to find the resultant vector, but in this case, the resultant vector is given as 2,500 newtons in the vertical direction. But the problem solving concepts that we've used in previous examples, those are gonna remain the same. We still wanna add these two vectors together and we wanna create some sort of a diagram that we can uh, use trigonometry to help us figure out what P and this alpha angle is. So let's start by doing that. If I redraw that point A down here, this is point A, and I said this vector right here is that 1600 Newton vector. So this is the uh, 1600 Newton vector right here. And then if I took the tail of P and I added it to the tip of that 1600 Newton vector, uh, we would get something like this. This would be your P vector. Now, I've drawn this in a very special way because, again, we know that the resultant vector is 2,500 newtons in the vertical direction. So the resultant vector is going to go from the tail of the 1,600 newton vector down to the tip of P, and it's going to be exactly vertical. And I'll just call this R. Now, we already know the magnitude of R. The magnitude of R is 2,500 newtons. And the angle that it's making uh, with this horizontal line is 90 degrees. Okay, cool. Let's start labeling some angles because we're going to need these angles to figure out what P is. Now, we already know that the angle that that 1600 Newton uh, vector makes with this horizontal, this angle right here, this is 15 degrees. So again, this is the 1600 Newton vector right there, and the angle that it makes is 15 degrees. Now, what about this vector P, which is this vector right here? Well, if we know that this angle right here is alpha, we'll know that if we drew a vertical line right here, this angle right here would be alpha. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me draw this vertical line that we're talking about. Uh, this vertical line is gonna start right there, and it's gonna go through that point. And this angle right here, we already know, well, it's unknown, but it is labeled to be alpha. And so if this angle is alpha, what do we know about angles along parallel lines? So if these two lines are parallel, then the traversal through those parallel lines will create these alternate and interior angles right here. So once again, if this line is parallel to this line, and if we drew a traversal line through those two parallel lines, then we could say that this angle and this angle are equal. Well, if I said this angle was alpha, then that would mean that this angle right here would also be alpha. Okay, so just to finish off the angles within this triangle that we've drawn, let's label this angle right here beta, and let's label this angle right here as gamma. Now we can actually solve for this gamma angle right away because we know that this line is horizontal and we know that the resultant is making a 90 degree angle from that horizontal line. So this gamma angle right here is going to be 90 degrees minus 15 degrees. And that is, well, that's simply 75 degrees. So we've already figured out gamma, which is awesome. And because we figured out gamma, there's actually one more angle that I wanna label, and that is this angle right here. Well, just like I said previously, if you had this parallel line and this parallel line and you had this traversal going through them, you know that this angle and this angle are the same. And if this angle right here is gamma, then that must mean that this angle right here is also gamma. So I can just draw that in, I'll say 
gamma is right there. Now, because I've drawn this vertical line here, we know that gamma plus beta plus alpha is going to be equal to 180 degrees. So in other words, 180 degrees is equal to alpha plus beta plus gamma. Now, gamma, we already know, it's just 75 degrees. So if I plug that into here and I simplify this entire equation, what I get is that 105 degrees is equal to alpha plus beta, right? I just subtracted 75 from both sides. So this equation right here, I'm going to call equation 1. Because we are going to need another equation, obviously there are two unknowns, right, and only one equation. So we need some more information in order to be able to figure out what alpha is and, of course, the magnitude of P. Well, because this is a triangle right here, maybe we could use the law of sines to represent these different angles and the relationships that they have with their opposite uh, sides. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll start by saying, well, we know the law of sines, right? So we have sine of angle alpha over the opposite side, which is 1600 newtons, right? Again, quick review. Here's your angle alpha. The side opposite to this corner or this angle is this 1600 newton vector right there. And this is equal to sine of beta over, well, what's the opposite of beta? It's this 2,500 Newton resultant vector. So that's 2,500 Newtons. And that is equal to sine of gamma over, well, the magnitude of P, right? The magnitude of P is this right here because that side is opposite to this gamma angle right here. Now, we already know what gamma is, right? It's 75 degrees. So I'll just quickly rewrite this equation in terms of gamma being 75 degrees. And that gives us this relationship right here. Now, I could have solved for the sine of 75 degrees, but then we would have to deal with fractions and num uh, decimal numbers. And uh, this is just cleaner to keep it this way. So I'll just keep that as is for now. And now we can finally use this law of sines right here, this relationship along with equation one to figure out some unknown variables, including alpha, beta, and of course, the magnitude of P. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to label this relationship quote unquote, equation number two. Now this is obviously a long equation. This is really a relationship. And the relationship is made out of different equations, right? You could take these two terms, set them equal to each other, or you could take these two terms, or you could take this term and this term, set them equal. They're all, they're, there's multiple equations within this relationship. But for simplicity, I'll just call this one and then this entire thing two. Now, here comes the fun part, and this is where you have to get a little creative. You have these two different equations and relationships. You need to be the one to determine what relationship you want to use in order to try to figure out what alpha is, what beta is, what P is. To start off, because this is a relationship between alpha, beta, and this angle of 105 degrees, I could potentially use this equation and this equation right here, where a sine of alpha over some magnitude equals sine of beta over some magnitude, uh, because the two unknowns are alpha and beta here, alpha and beta here. So these two equations right here and here might be good to use to solve for alpha or beta. So I'm going to use those two equations, and I'm actually going to solve for beta. Now, to start off, I'm going to take this equation number one right here, and I'm going to write it in terms of beta. So that equation was, again, 105 degrees is equal to alpha plus beta. Now, if I rewrite this in terms of beta, I will get alpha is equal to 105 degrees minus beta. Now, I want to use this relationship right here, and I want to plug this value of alpha into this term right here. And then we're going to have to use some trigonometric identities uh, to figure out what this beta angle is. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me rewrite that relationship down here. So we have sine of alpha over the 1600 newtons is equal to sine of beta over the 2500 newtons. Now, I want to take this right here and I want to plug it in to this alpha value right there. So if I scroll down a little bit and start doing that, I will get, let's just do it, let's do it here. So this turns into sine of, well, alpha now is 105 degrees 
minus beta, and this is over 1600 newtons. Now this is equal to sine of beta over 2500 newtons. Now, there's something interesting here. We have sine of some angle minus some angle. Now, we need to expand this term out so that we could solve for beta. Now, if you remember from trigonometry, we have the summation and difference formulas for sine and cosine, and specifically uh, for sine or the difference of those two angles. Uh, I'll quickly write that here. You have, uh, if you had sine of angle A minus B, uh, this would expand to sine of A, angle A, times the cosine of angle B, minus the cosine of angle A times the sine of angle B. So this is just a trigonometric identity that we can use to expand this term right here. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to write sine of 105 degrees times the cosine of beta minus the cosine of 105 degrees times the sine of beta. And now all of this, this term right here, is over 1600 newtons, and this is equal to sine of beta over 2500 newtons. Now, what I can do here is I can multiply both sides uh, by this 1600 newton to get rid of the 1600 newton uh, from this term right here. And what I'm left with is this equation right here. And all I did was I just simplified the 1600 over 2500, right? I just canceled out the two zeros um, from both terms and I just get 16 over 25. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this term to both sides so that I can move this term over to this side of the equation. And if I do that, I get sine of 105 degrees times the cosine of beta is equal to 16 over 25 times the sine of beta plus cosine of 105 times the sine of beta. Now, why did I do that? Well, I did that because now if I divide both sides by this cosine beta term, over here I'm going to get cosine of beta. Now why is that important? Well, if you have sine of beta over cosine of beta, well, sine of any angle over the cosine of any angle becomes tangent of that angle. So you'll see it in a minute here, but let's keep simplifying this equation down and you'll see where the tangent comes in. So I get sine of 105 degrees times cosine beta. The left-hand side of this equation is still the same. And on the right side, I still have the 16 over 25 times the sine of beta plus this cosine of 105. If we plug that into our calculators and try to get a number, what you would actually get is this square root 2 minus the square root of 6 all divided by 4. That is just this cosine of 105 degrees times the sine of beta. Now, what do you notice here? Both of these terms have this sine of beta in them. So you have the sine of beta and sine of beta. What we can do is we could just add these two terms by saying uh, 16 over 25 plus this right here times the sine of beta will simplify this side of the equation right here. So if I do that on the left-hand side, I still get sine of 105. I'm just keeping it clean right now times the cosine of beta is equal to 16 over 25 plus square root of 2 minus square root of 6 over 4 and this entire thing times sine of beta. Another way you could think about it is we're just factoring this common sine of beta term out of this entire expression here. Okay, so what the heck does this do? Well, we're getting closer and closer to this sine of beta over cosine beta. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do two steps at the same time. I'm going to divide both sides by this cosine beta, and then I'm also going to divide both sides by this uh, big number right here. And what that will do is this number will end up going over here, and then you'll have this cosine beta going over there. I know that's starting to look crazy, but let's go ahead and do that. What I get on the left-hand side is sine of 105 degrees divided by this entire thing right here, and that is 16 over 25 
plus square root of 2 minus square root of 6 over 4. And this is equal to sine of beta over cosine of beta. And hey, we have sine of an angle over cosine of the same angle. This just simplifies to tan of beta, the tangent of beta. Now, you'll notice that this side of the equation just simplifies down to a number. And you can easily put this into your calculator and get some, some value for this uh, term. And then that value will just simply be set to tangent of beta. So then if I took the tan inverse of both sides, so tan inverse of this entire thing right here, that would just give us our beta angle. So now we can just plug this giant thing into our calculator. And what we get for beta, we get beta is equal to an angle of 68.4644 degrees. So awesome, we found beta. And just to give you a quick refresh of what the heck beta was, if we go back to our diagram that we drew right here, beta is this angle. And so we can plug beta back into equation one to figure out what alpha is, right? Because I said that 180 degrees is equal to gamma plus beta plus alpha. So that's how we got this equation right here. And we just figured out what beta is. So let's now figure out what this alpha value is. And I'll do that right here. I'll say that 105 degrees is equal to alpha plus beta, which was 68.4644 four degrees. And what we get for alpha is 36.5356 degrees. So there we go. There is alpha. So alpha is the direction that this vector P is making from this vertical line. So awesome, we figured out one part of the question, and that is the direction of P, right? Because this P is a vector and we need both magnitude and direction. So alpha is this value right here. Now we need to determine the magnitude of P. So how do we do that? Well, if you remember from this second uh, equation slash relationship, we did the law of sines, and we had this P term, the magnitude of P right here. Now we already know beta and we already know alpha, and of course we already know gamma. So I could take this term and I could set it equal to either this term or this term, and I could just simply solve for this magnitude of P. So I will just go ahead and choose, well, let's just choose the first term. I'll set that equal to that. And I'll do that way down here. So I just rewrote that equation right here. Sine of alpha over 1600 is sine of gamma over the magnitude of P. And again, we already know what gamma is. Gamma was 75. And then we figured out what alpha was uh, somewhere up here. Right there, alpha was 36.5 degrees. So I'm just going to fill in those values here. And this equation uh, turns into, so that turns into this thing right here. I just plugged in the values for alpha and gamma. And now if we plug this into our calculators and we just solve for our only unknown variable here, which is the magnitude of P, we get P, or the magnitude of P, is equal to about 2596 newtons. Now you could just... You could round this up to 2600 because it's so close, but I'll just I'll just keep it at 2596 newtons. So, okay, awesome. So our final answer, our final answer to this problem becomes P is equal to 2596 newtons, and it's making an angle uh, to this vertical line right here. Uh, there's your direction. This angle right here would be about 36. Point Five degrees. And again, 36.5 degrees is just from our alpha angle right here, which is this angle right here, right? It's just making 35 degrees uh, from that vertical line right there. So there you go. That is our final answer right here.